Hello, everyone, and welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We've got four brand new decks for you here today, and we're going to begin today by taking a look at a specific zoo deck built to counter the incoming meta. The meta has fully shifted at the top of the infinite leaderboard away from Arisham, and if you've been paying attention to Marvel Snap, you know Glenn Jones, the lead designer of Marvel Snap, has suggested that top infinite metas do trickle down into the rest of the meta relatively quickly and once they do that's when balance happens that's when changes happen so we're going to continue to try and keep you ahead of the curve with this deck from Jakub Levich. Jakub Levich is a uh, player in the FAK team who has built this zoo deck this zoo deck is really, really powerful into the meta. A lot of what the best decks are trying to do right now are win with a juggernaut in Thena builds. Good. We've got a lot of juggernaut, we've got a lot of Thena build, and we've got a lot of Gwenpool. If you can throw priority, and you should be able to throw priority relatively simply with this deck, you should be able to handle all of that. You're basically filling the whole board, so juggernaut cannot beat you, and Shadow King fundamentally guarantees you another lane. There is a lot of power to this deck, and it is worth checking out. Um, you can find, you can replace Nico in this deck. It is a powerful card. It is in spotlights this week, and we will be reviewing that spotlight cash later on in this very video. In addition, we'll be getting to the giveaway pretty soon in this video as well. So we are, um, you can replace Nico should you not be opening this week for that card for Iceman or Hydra Bob. Cull Obsidian can be crossbones. Cull is actually very good in this list. Cull is harder to replace than Nico. Mockingbird is required. Nocturne, however, is not. Nocturne can be Ghost, which sort of just takes care of all the BS. You don't have anything to worry about as far as losing priority at that point. You can just sort of play your stuff. Can be Hope, which allows you to end game with both Blue Marvel and Shadow King, which is a very powerful last turn. You can have Copycat, which is just sort of taking something, giving you extra uh, options, and you can replace it with Marvel Boy, which is where I will be going next week when Marvel Boy comes out. I am extraordinarily excited for Marvel Boy, the new Spotlight card. Marvel Boy is a 3-2, Series 5, 6,000 tokens. After each turn, give three of your one-cost cards plus one power. So if you play this on three and have a Squirrel Girl and your opponent does not destroy those cards, you've gotten uh, turn three, three power, right? Turn four, three power turn 5-3 power, turn 6-3 power, that is 12 extra power from this 3-2, that is a 3-14, and you can just play other ones, it works with any one, Squirrel Girl, Squirrel Girl just gives you 3 at a time, that's insane power, so this is going to be an incredibly, incredibly powerful card, assuming that uh, the patch coming does not change what he does, then Marvel Boy is looking like a card that will fit beautifully into this deck and push it up another level and yes shadow king will lower the power of your one drops but if they're not all in one lane you should be able to work that out all right so this deck asks the question what if gilgamesh is a trap and zoo has been good all along we just didn't realize it turns out based on results this deck has climbed easily in the top 100 and is winning major tournament games snap masters results coming soon that um Gilgamesh is not actually needed to make Zoo powerful. Zoo has enough power without Gilgamesh to compete at the top levels of the meta. Turn 1, Nightcrawler over Squirrel Girl over Ant-Man. Uh, turn 2, Dazzler over the Ones. Turn 3, you need to figure out what you need to, uh, if you need to win or lose prior to win or lose the game. If the opponent has played nothing, it's very likely to be a Surfer deck. Now, Surfer is both at the lower ranks of the meta because Cozy, the most impactful uh, lower meta content creator like if he releases a deck and you're lower in the meta you're pre-infinite you're uh low rank infinite that deck becomes everywhere it's very similar to what happens with cam best at the top of infinite just for the record uh but also there is another player and we're going to take a look at that deck later on this video that has a surfer that has climbed from the top 100 to rank seven that's the one that's the thumbnail so that climbing surfer deck um means that surfer is powerful again and killmonger is back that is seemingly the only real place there's not a lot of destroying the meta that killmonger exists but if they haven't played a card until turn three it's reasonably likely they're surfer and if they're surfer they have killmonger and now you want to make sure you're losing prio if you want to lose prio play nocturne 
Also, against the Movers deck, unless they're really, really scaling early, be careful with your Shauna. You want to lose Pryo. If you can afford to lose Pryo, um, all of a sudden your Shadow King is significantly better. Turn four, you have Kazar or Kull. Um, and what you're doing here is you're basically determining, um, am I stacking one power or stacking wide? If you're gaining Pryo, you tend to be stacking wide. If you're um, stacking one lane, you tend to favor Kull. Turn five, blue Marvel, or four plus one. You're fine going Kazar and Kull here. And then turn six, you go either Kull or Mockingbird and Shadow King, or Shauna, Shadow King, and Atman. And that's how you end the game. There's, again, an absolutely crazy amount of power here. This deck works. You want to make sure Shadow King is stealing Q-Cubes. It is the most important card in this build. One last look at the deck before we go forward. Uh, this is, again, this does not look like it's going to be as powerful and effective as it is, and it's going to take a little bit of practice to get going. I know zoo decks are supposed to be simple. This one is not largely because of the priority games I spent so much of this section talking about. If you enjoyed that and you would like at least three brand new decks every single weekday, we're aiming for four where possible, please hit that sub button. We are doing our best to get to 15,000 by the end of the year, but we need you to hit that sub button in order to get there. So if you're willing, we'd really appreciate it. If you're already subbed, hit that like, hit that comment. It helps us a huge amount. You get seven days a week of videos and you get at least like 20 new decks a week. So please hit that button. In addition, if you'd like to win a season pass, we are kicking off our five Hawkeye season passes giveaway today. Every single video's comments from today until Sunday will have a Hawkeye season pass in it. And then we're going to do week two of that same giveaway um, the week after where every week, every uh, day after the comments will have a Hawkeye will announce the winners next Monday for this five Hawkeye season pass giveaway. So please, all you have to do is hit that sub button, like the video, and there will be a point in this video where I ask you a question. You answer that question uh, in the comments and you're entered to win the season pass, nice and simple. So if you're interested in that Hawkeye season pass, make sure you do that. Again, we'll be doing this every freaking day. We give away 10 at the start of the season, uh, five the first week, five at the end of the first week, and then we give away one a week for the rest of the season. So if you're looking for that season pass on the Jeep, this is the place for you. All right, next up, we have safeties above Mockingbird. Uh, this list is another one that's just like, does not look like it's going to be nearly as strong as it does. But what Cassandra Nova has done is give you play against Arisham, so that means you can do other powerful things. Uh, and oh my, does this do other powerful things. This is a very cool list that has a lot of simple and effective play lines uh, and fundamentally steals cubes. The main goal here is to Cersei uh, up a lane with enough power on turn five to win. And then hopefully you can go Mockingbird and Shang-Chi on turn six in order to win the game. You can also end up going Sh um, Mockingbird and Sage to win the game as well if you're just going the power route. You can find Safety Blade, who has climbed into the top 50 with this list um, after falling down around out of the top 100 uh, at twitch.tv slash Safety Blade. Safety Blade is a Marvel Snap Zone writer who you probably know for creating the Slayer Blade, Cannonball, uh, Professor X list. He also created the original, original Dracula Dump and so many other powerful decks. Nico, um, ooh, that's not their placements here. Uh, Nico can be Electra here or... Um, blah, 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 blah. All right, good. We still have that properly. Let's do this on this slide. Excuse me. Nico for this deck is extremely powerful because it can turn Mysterio into Demon. It can give Mysterio more strength. Same thing for Hood. It can destroy. It has cards to destroy to draw to. Nico is really, really good here, but Nico is totally replaceable with almost any one or good two. Think Iceman. Think White Widow. Think any of those style cards. You will be fine. I like Shadow King, but I'm not sure this deck wants Shadow King. If you do use it, you have to be careful with your Sage and Cassandra Nova, but feel free to throw Shadow King in there. Shadow King is incredible right now. You do need Beast, you do need Mysterio, and you do need Sage. Cassandra Nova depends where you're ranked. If you are reasonably high ranked, Arisham has disappeared. Arisham is going to disappear from the lower ranks just given time. But if you are reasonably lower ranked, then you're going to need Cassandra Nova to answer those Arisham lists. Uh, Cassandra Nova, Copycat, and Nocturne are just filler good cards. None of them are important. They can all be sort of anything. They can be um, Polaris. They can be Red Guardian. They could be um, Gladiator. Pick your good cards and feel free to replace them. Baron Zemo also makes a lot of sense here with both Mockingbird and Cersei. So any of those cards are really, really good here. Um, Viper 
has to be Viper, Shang-Chi has to be Shang-Chi, Cersei has to be Cersei, and Mockingbird has to be Mockingbird. All good? All good. Sorry about that. All right. Safety says, I didn't know what I had here, because talking to Safety about this deck and what made it so powerful is why I messed up that last slide. Sorry about that, friends. All right. Turn one, Hood, and there are lots of good Nico spells for Hood or Mysterio, so don't hesitate to hit one early, especially because you have Beast. Uh, turn two is Mysterio. You can beat or you can beast the Hood, especially if you already have Viper. Turn three, Cassandra Nova is, generally speaking, a really good play. Um, you're just happy to get a 3-7 out. Viper, uh, and Viper, either the Mysterio clone or the Hood is perfectly fine here, especially if you've already gotten two uses out of the Hood. If you played Mysterio and just want to drop Mockingbird, feel free. Uh, although, at that point, you're sort of begging a Shang-Chi. You're doing that usually for a specific reason. Or you can just drop Nocturne. Nice casual Nocturne is fine here. Uh, turn four is Mockingbird or the turn three stuff. You can also um, bounce Cassandra Nova and Hood, which is a lot more powerful than it looks. At that point, you are replaying Cassandra Nova and Hood on turn five. Um, you are not Cerseing on turn five. Good. You're going to replay Cassandra Nova, Hood, and then probably Sage on turn five. Uh, and then you're going to Cersei on turn six instead of turn five. Then you're going to go off with demons and Shang-Chi at the end of the game, or Sage and Shang-Chi, etc., etc. Sage and Mist Sage and Mockingbird, and so on. Either which way, that is how you win the game. Uh, fundamentally, there's some RNG baked into this, largely because of Cersei. Cersei has far, far, far more good outcomes than bad outcomes. The math has been done, but occasionally you're going to get a bad outcome. You should probably snap Cersei because your good outcomes are fundamentally unbeatable, and your bad outcomes immediately you just retreat. Uh, before turn six. That's the other reason to do it on turn five where possible. It not only makes Mockingbird cheaper on turn six if you Cersei on turn five, but if you do get, if uh, your Mysterio immediately turns into Carnage and ruins your whole board, then all of a sudden that uh, you just get to retreat, hopefully for um, two, before the game runs away from you. If you'd like to see gameplay for these decks and so many more, please check out the stream team. Today is Tuesday, so the great Prashan will be streaming at 12 p.m. Eastern and then streaming again tonight. So if you'd like to check that out, please check it out. Gregor2424, who really needs some YouTube love, has a video out this morning with yesterday's decks. Make sure you check that out as well. Tomorrow will be gaming with Flash X, etc., etc. One more thing to mention while we're on this page, though. Please check out Fathor Newman over on Twitch. He's doing his best to make a partner push and could really use that extra support. Also, congrats to the great Perry Manilow, who just reached partner on Twitch. All right, next up, we have that surfer list I promised you at the start of the video. This is Nithiel's surfer. Um, this list is awesome. I don't know what else to say. It is expensive. Like, the decks are getting more expensive. As Second Dinner has released more and more just good cards, these just good cards are, um, how do I phrase this, are going in more and more decks. That doesn't mean you have to have all of them to play the decks. In fact, I would argue that there are only uh, three high series cards that are actually important to the deck, and one of them is in Spotlights later today, or depending on when you watch, right now. That would be Hope Summers. You need Sebastian Shaw, and you need Gwenpool as well. I strongly urge you to consider, if you are playing Marvel Snap, considering this a subscription model. If you bought Gwenpool and you bought Sebastian Shaw, your life is so much easier than people that have to try and pull those later in spotlights. $10 is far, far, far cheaper than 6,000 tokens, which often runs you $50 to $60 worth of value, and you get enough gold to get you most of the way to an extra... Um, to an extra Series 5 every month and a half from that. So, like, there's a lot of value in that season pass. Buy it immediately, fundamentally, no matter what. You will not be sorry you do, or at least buy it by the first damn week in missions. Um, meanwhile, which is going to mean the only card that you... Well, oh, no. Uh, Hope, Gwenpool, and Shaw are all season pass cards. So if you are buying the season pass, you have everything you need for this list. Uh, Cassandra Nova is a card you can get for free, and... Copycat and Nocturne are both completely fine cards that could completely be a ton of other stuff. You can find Nithiel at twitch.tv slash Nithiel, same exact underscore between those, same exact name on YouTube. Uh, turn uh, Gwenpool, Hope, and Shaw needed. Please note, all three of those are season pass cards. We're saying December, March, July as the season pass cards. So, again, don't hesitate to buy the season pass these cards end up useful i was told at the time when shaw was released that he wasn't that good he wasn't that good eventually he 
he ends up that good. Uh, he's a scaling, he's a scaling power threat, and scaling power almost always ends up finding use in Marvel Snap. Cassandra Nova, Copycat, and Nocturne are just good cards, and they can all go away. We're talking Gladiator, Red Guardian, Rogue, Mobius, Polaris. Pick a good three. Spider-Man, pick a good three. Replace as you would like to. There is some, not a ton, some argument as well for Sage or Wolfsbane. All right, this is all the way to rank seven from out of the top 100. This list is cr climbing with a completely cr crazy win rate right now. And Surfer is back. Surfer really, really struggled. It was like one of the top five decks in the meta. And then Arisham chased it away. And now as Arisham has died, Surfer is back. Turn one, Nova. And the reason you turn one, Nova, is because usually you would want to save turn uh, four or five for Nova. But you very often don't have the extra energy. So I just get down Nova when I can. Turn two, I forge if Brood or Shaw are my next play, or I have Hope Summers. Turn three, I want to play Brood if I have Absorbing Man, or I would like to play Hope if I don't have Absorbing Man, or Shaw and Nocturne. Turn four, you Absorb Man Brood, or you play Gwenpool. Those are the only two acceptable plays, really. And those are better than a three. If you can play... Um, a card on hope it's really important to do so obviously you can't absorb men brood on hope that wouldn't make any sense but if you can play gwenpool or whatever three think shaw nocturne on hope it's really really powerful because that gives you two threes on turn five um if you have hope you play those two threes if not you play forge plus three and again ideally that is brood or um ideally that is brood or that is shaw if you played hope on turn four please make sure one of those cards is on hope because that gives you access to an Absorbing Man on that um, Brood on turn 6, which is still powerful, and then you can still play Surfer. If not, you're very likely to go Killmonger Surfer, but honestly, the uh, board will tell you what to do with Surfer at that point. Cool. This deck even now has played into Arisham, thanks to Cassandra Nova, with this sweet new variant, which I think I like more than the uh, 500 milli one, which I have. But I think I like this one more, and I'm probably going to grab it. But yeah. That's the list. This is very cool. Uh, please note, Copycat and Nocturne don't actually appear on the play-by-play, -play, right? They are extra cards. They are extra threes. You just want to play extra threes in Surfer, and these are the threes with the most upside. That does not mean that they are requirements. All good? Let us go to Spotlights the week of July 30th. If you need Hope Summers, I think you probably should open. I don't want to say that. There's a ton of good cards in August, and we're going to do a video uh, toward the end of this week going over all of next month's cards. So you can wait till at least Sunday before you feel like you have to open for these, um, because that's the day I'm releasing the new season video where we talk a whole bunch about all of the um, August cards and all of the August spotlights. But if you need Hope, I think you should open. If you need Nico and Proxima, I think I would skip. Proxima has one very good deck. We're going to look at it on the next slide, but we're not going to cover it in any great detail. Uh, we've already looked at two Nico decks and a Hope deck, though, so we've already covered those. I think Nico and Hope are stellar cards. I think Nico is an amazing card that is 99% of the time, unless you're dying to play Phoenix Force, that is 99% of the time just a replaceable card. Hope is often very hard to replace, and thus... Um, and thus, you should probably open for her if you didn't buy her. But again, three months ago, right? Four months ago, March. Uh, by the end of the month, three months ago. Season pass card, right? Like, you could have bought this card for $10, and then you could save this week, and that will get you two other cards later. So, I don't know. I think you should skip Hope. As far as Spotlight variants go, this is the Nico that was in Spotlights the first time she was in Spotlights. I did not open it. Uh... She came out in October, and this is the first Spotlight variant. I didn't open it, but I have the Dan Hip. I have the, um, oh my god, I don't even remember what it's called, uh, Midnight Suns version, and I have the really cool Spotlight one with all the eyes, so I'm perfectly, and I have one other. I think I have Sister Room too. So I have more than enough Nico Minoru variants. I do not need this. Uh, I only, I have two Hope variants. I have the one that came this season pass and the uh, only other Hope variant that's out right now. I might want this, but I don't have any Proxima variant, and I like to have a uh, Proxima variant for each card. 
I'm a content creator, so I sort of will out partially because it's a tax write-off, partially because that kind of thing really does help content creation. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. So I'm very likely to open for this Proxima. And if I happen to get Hope or Nico along the way, so be it. But the second I open Proxima, I'll be done. I have 37 spotlight keys and a bajillion, bajillion-ish tokens. There is no new card this week. It's worth remembering the new card would have been Cassandra Nova, who is in, obviously, Deadpool's Diner. Uh, if you need Hope and Nico, a thousand percent open immediately. If you need Nico and Proxima, I think you're going to have to decide if you want to play this next discard deck. But if you need Hope in any capacity with any other card, I think it's worth opening. All good? All right. Next up, we have Chase Pitzer's S Rank of Cringe. We're not actually going to cover this deck. We covered this deck, oh, I don't know, a week and a half ago. Um, we covered this deck, I'm 90% sure, the exact same day as the copycat opening video. I will link that video, uh, hopefully, right here on the screen as you're watching. Uh, let's pray I don't forget, friends. But it should be right on the screen as a like click if you would like to know how to play this list. So this is the only Proxima list in Marvel Snap right now. It is a very powerful list. If you are planning on buying Proxima, opening for Proxima, make sure you have Gwenpool. Make sure you have MODOK. You don't actually need me. You can totally, totally do without Meek, um, but you need to make sure you have Gwenpool. You need to make sure you have Modok. If you have those two cards then uh, and you want to play this deck, then you need Proxima. Outside of that, you don't need Proxima for anything. Uh, hopefully they put Apocalypse back to eight power soon because I like when this deck is in the meta and they might have killed it a little too soon. All right, our final deck of the day is Binx's four drop on three. And we're looking at this deck before we look at a sort of similar deck tomorrow, because this is going to show us uh, sort of where the meta is heading in terms of countering all the move and all the other nonsense that's all over the place. This deck is trying to get ahead of curve without bothering with Harisham and then just put power all over the board. It's going to say, I don't care about your juggernaut. I don't care about your... Um, Captain Marvel, if I've just got a lot of power in every lane, it shouldn't freaking change anything. What you're trying to fundamentally do is you're trying to use um, Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel, and Gwenpool to sort of cheat wins, right? And then hopefully you have enough power elsewhere. Doom helps you out here. You can find uh, Binks at youtube.com slash at Binks Plays. Iron Lad can be Jubilee or Wong in this list. Both are worse, but both are perfectly acceptable. Uh, there is some argument for Wong here because you can go Psylocke or Zabu into White Widow, and then you can play that Gwenpool, or you can play that uh, Iron Lad slash Doom, and that's pretty nice. Um, Nebula can be Nightcrawler. You actually don't lose almost anything from that. It's perfectly fine replacement. I'm not a thousand percent sure Iceman should be Nightcrawler. Iceman's a very good card, especially without Mobius in the meta, but I am a big fan of... Um, Nightcrawler right now, just that moving power is so good. White Widow can be Jeff, Medusa, or Shadow King. I'm actually going to say uh, Shadow King is a real, real shout here, because if you can go Ms. Marvel and Shadow King, you're going to win a lot of games in Marvel Snap. That is a really, really powerful way to end the game. You are adding um, 14 power, and then you're removing a 16 power, technically, because Shadow King has two, and then you're removing whatever power your opponent has accrued throughout the game. It's a wonderful way to win games in Marvel Snap right now. Um... I'm not sure if I'm going to make that change, but I think it's worthwhile. Nocturne can be, again, any good three. Nocturne is just here as a mover. Jeff, Gladiator, Copycat, Polaris. You get the idea. Zebu, somehow still a Series 4. Ms. Marvel and Gwenpool are needed cards. Uh, the question I'm asking with this deck is, but what if we had Sandman for all the bounce, for all the little movers, for all the nonsense all over the meta? I think bounce is, uh, I think Sandman is in a really good place, and that's a deck we're going to look at in tomorrow's video, so make sure you hit that sub button and don't miss it. Right at the bottom of the screen, by the way, um, under me, there's a little, like, YouTube button. That has a sub on it. If you click that, congrats, you're subbed. So, please do so. Turn one, Nebula over Iceman. Turn two, Zabu or Psylocke is your goal. Uh, over Nebula, Widow, or Iceman. Turn three, if you didn't get a uh, Psylocke or Zabu, you're dropping Nocturne. You would like to drop Gwenpool, Iron Lad, or one of the other fours here. You're perfectly fine, even with the Ms. Marvel. Obviously, I don't mean Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is at the end of the game. Um, turn five is four again, and then turn four and five are both just four again. You're just dropping more fours. And then turn six is Doom or Shang-Chi and eight to drop. Uh, and that's how you win with this list. It's Really, really simple and really, really powerful. I think this list is stellar and worth checking out. Props to Binks. By the way, you probably know Binks. He's one of the biggest Marvel Snap content creators. 
Key and Ika were on the podcast that released this Saturday, where we taught you how to build decks in Marvel Snap. So if you're interested in learning how to build your own decks in Marvel Snap, check out that podcast from this Saturday right here on the channel or on your favorite podcatcher. Questions of the day, and then this video is over. So our first question is Ratko, the great Philip Rakovich, who's done such a stellar job helping me out with a bunch of shorts, wants, to, wants a Deadpool Wolverine movie review. So... I'm going to actually answer that last, even though it's first, so that, um, now nah, let's do a spoiler-free review. Okay. The first chunk of the movie did nothing for me, and the second chunk of the movie I thought was really fun. It relies really, really heavily on edgelord humor and, uh, and a bunch of cameos, like a ridiculous amount of cameos. It plays off the ideas found in Loki, like the TVA, so seeing Loki at least season one first would really, really help. Uh, season two is obviously better, but at least season one would help. Um, also, seeing Logan first would help. This is a continuity-heavy movie. You'll be fine without it if all you want is the um, dick jokes, but there are a ridiculous amount of cameos, and I'm not sure what you get out of this movie if you don't like really care about all the random famous people in it. It ends up in a fairly good place, but I don't think it's a good movie. It's a good movie if you're a huge Marvel or MCU fan. But if you're an adult, I find it hard to imagine you laughing more than you cringe. For me, it was cringe a bit more than laughter. And then the emotional moments were okay. I don't think they did an amazing job. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is a great character, so there is that. But, um, I don't know. Like... They spend a lot of the early movie in really weird places, and I think it was it was really hard to get me back once we got to the actual plot. So that's where I am on Deadpool vs. Wolverine. I think I'd rate it about a C plus, maybe a B minus if I'm feeling generous. So I think I'd rate it about a C plus. Let me know what you think about the Deadpool Wolverine movie. If you're seeing it, if you're not seeing it, if you saw it, what you think of it. That is how you enter to win the season pass today. What are your Deadpool Wolverine thoughts? It's going to let me know something about my audience by you answering these questions, right? Keratix Lee asks why they stopped doing the $10 season pass bundle reruns with only cosmetics. So they all, supposedly they were only doing those for beta because obviously you had to be in the beta to get the beta season pass cards. Um, why they stopped doing it is largely because pretty soon they would get to series four and five cards that they don't want to sell us for ten dollars they don't want to sell us the old zabu bundle with the zabu variant for ten dollars they don't want to sell us um the modok or nimrod series four cards bundles for ten dollars should they do that um, over a year out yes but they're not going to they value the uh high series cards more than that unfortunately Fire Troll asks if Move needs Men on Web or its own Gilgamesh, and I think we answered that at the start of the video. I think Gilgamesh is a powerful card, but not a requirement. There are enough cards that get big in Marvel Snap that having a 20, 20 power card-ish um, is useful, but not a requirement to win. You can win just as easily by, um, by going mid-range. There are 10s that cost 3 or 4, right? Mockingbird. Uh, and then playing a couple of fives, and it's not hard to get a 1-5 anymore, uh, let alone with Kazar and Blue Marvel, but also just running a card like Hydra Bob. You've now, instead of spending five and spending your whole game and your whole last turn doing that, you have throughout the game ended up getting, um, let's say, you have throughout the game ended up getting uh, 15 power just from those two cards without the extra work, and then they can still get pumped, and you can still play other things at the end of the game, including important and needed tech pieces. I think specifically um, that's why these big game enders aren't always the most useful, although I will argue again that I think the exception to that rule right now is Ajax because Ajax doesn't get to 17 or 19. Ajax is getting to um, 21, 25, 27, which is just so freaking much more power that I think that that is um, enough to overcome the difference because like, when you get to I win lane alone, we're in a different place. Uh, also, I can play on turn five is pretty damn nice too. Meanwhile, moves problem to me has always been that you have to sequence things incredibly precisely. Um, you have to start planning on turn one based on locations where and how you move things. Madam Web is a two, three releasing in September that is right now data mined as ongoing, uh, 
ongoing, each turn you can move one card away from here. That changes the need for that sequencing. You can use an Iron Fist or a Ghost Spider now to pull your move card into there, and then you can push it out, perhaps even into a Hercules, which can push it back there or elsewhere. But that is incredibly, incredibly powerful. I think Madam Web is going to be the best move card in the game, and I think it's going to fundamentally change Marvel Snap. Once people realize it doesn't just go on move decks, I think it just kind of goes in every deck. We're seeing right now with the little movers how hard it is to play around cards that move all over the board whenever you want, and Madam Web says, I can do that too. Certain tiers of support on our Patreon, the $10 tier in particular, comes with on-air thanks. I'm going to say thank you to the following Patreons. Abigail Heaslin, Mandatory Burnout, Cables, Matt H., it regardless, David G. Wingfield, Direwolf, LAB, Fa Thor Newman, Good Dog Gamer, This Is The Way, Inc., I Am Frostman, Jay Nevery, Corwin, Brian Bryan, Kiertix Lee, Koire, Pyrofros, The Goat Seeker, Denman Falcon, who you should 100% check out on YouTube, please do so, Quid Pro Joe, Doc D, the King of New Marvel Snap content, who you should also check out on YouTube, Brat Nick, Ginger Prime, Philip Rakovich, thank you again, Raku. Haplo, Kenny Loggins of the Danger Zone, Rob Silverman, The Beza, Exorcist V and Skippy G, Snap Judgments League One, Champion, Tommy Nyquist, The King of Bros, Bro, Black Dahlia, The Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Ryan Wood, Kev Zihoda, Luna Chris, Archangel 3K, John Q, saying it different ways until someone corrects me, Louis Antonez, Mod Supreme, Models, the one and only Darth Tater, Remus Atala, Brian Kaufman, and Tristan H. Martin, full real names right here, Jason B., Jaden McDonaldino, check him out on Twitch, he's got that Sandman deck we're talking about tomorrow, the Fuzzy Dunlop, Spectrumix, Ooh. Matt H., there's two of them, yep, DJ Mikey Hedgings, no freaking flex, Ocularis, Mr. Craig Sterry, Seamus, Jonesy, Two Ties, the great Lauren Badevs, the Pirate King, Tucker, the homie Min, and of course, Gunny T, where the T stands for tomorrow is another day. Uh, if you're having a hard time, if you're going through it and you ever need someone to talk to, please feel free to reach out. That's what the T stands for. Final thoughts. Uh, hit that sub button if you liked. If you watched this far, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that sub button. Again, that sub, that like, that comment helps, and we do a ton of giveaways as well, and you get the best decks. Check out the Patreon. Uh, if you decide the $1 tier, you get an archive of decks and entry into all the tournaments. I think it's worth it. And if you want a last review of Copycat, if you're watching this in the morning, still decide whether to get that card, and a bunch of Deadpool's Diner Proven decks, click the link right below me. You won't regret it. I'll see you tomorrow for another Snap Take. Peace.